Hello again. In the last tutorial we talked about sound and the best way to get sound. In this tutorial we're going to talk about lighting, a few lighting effects, we're going to look at filming um, outside, filming inside and how to make a night shot in daytime. In this tutorial, I've got a special guest. This is Danny from Divine Photographic. So, hello, Danny. Hi, yeah. And he's also, as a photographer, he's also worked as a lighting director, and he has an immense knowledge of lights. First of all, we're going to talk about lights for a shoestring budget film, and then go up to something that won't break the bank, but they are readily available. So you've got no money, or very little money, to make your film. Go down to somewhere like Poundland, 99p store, and you can get some nice, cheap lampshades. Spray the inside silver, put a bulb in it, Bob's your uncle, you've got a nice, usable, directional light. Another type of light are these. They're photo flood lights. They take the screw bulb and they take uh, daylight bulbs as well as ordinary common or garden household bulbs. These you can pick up anywhere from about £10 upwards. They give a nice directional flow and they're great for filling lights or a backlight when you're doing green screen. Hi, yeah. Uh, now, another valuable piece of kit, but it's a piece of kit that is mostly forgotten about. There's a good old outdoor flood lamp. Now these are absolutely relatively cheap. Um, I have actually got one which I actually purchased from B and Q for I think it was six pound ninety nine. Um, absolutely fantastic, five hundred watt. And the most <coughs> important thing is the bulbs. Now, in video, bulbs are expensive. You can actually go to the ninety nine p store. And I do believe it's a pack of five for a pound. Absolutely fantastic bargain. However, one point to note is these lamps give off a lot of heat. Um, so it's not something you actually want next to cat, dog, and uh, combustible material. If you want to go more professional, something like this. This is called a par lamp. Now you can get these from eBay from anywhere from £30 each to £70 for four. They're great little lamps, they're, good. they're usually about 300 watts but they give a lovely spread. In fact I'm using one of those, which you can't actually, actually off camera, but it's just there giving us a nice reflection and bounce onto us as a nice fill-in. I've put here a little bit of heat proof paper here, but you can use all kinds of from grease proof paper through to putting in coloured gels to give mood lighting. Very handy little things. I would say though, when you they again they do burn hot, so don't leave anything combustible or flammable near them, and when you finish using them, leave them at least 20 minutes to cool down before you move them, otherwise you'll blow the bulbs. And even though the bulbs aren't too bad, they're about between six to ten pounds. If you're continuously blowing them, it gets expensive. Okay, the last, the last one we're going to show you is again another light that I'm using here. Now this is a light with a soft box. Let's bring it to camera there. It's a canvas frame with um, a pearled cover, which gives a lovely, brilliant white light. It's good for reflecting or straight on. It really is a nice spread and a nice light. It's got take the cover off. Your bulb goes in here. Right. Bulb goes in there, and you notice it's silver lined, so that it gives you a nice push of light. These you can pick these up anything from sixty pounds upwards. Um, the particular set I've got, they were seventy pounds for the whole for two soft boxes, two lamps, and two stands. 
Um, I think about 70 quid from eBay. Um, I'll put a link in the description below and I'll also put a link for a really nice background stand which comes with a free green screen which is about £45. I had a question on Facebook the other day. A young guy's film, he couldn't understand why his indoor shot was... he looked really red Yet outdoors, he looked fine. Well, this is to do with colour temperature. And Danny, would you like to explain briefly about colour temperature? Colour temperature is... Most people think it's pretty complicated, but it's pretty straightforward. Now, for example, the actual lamp I showed you, if you notice, it's got a yellow tinge from it. Now, that's approximately a colour temperature of 3,500 degrees Kelvin. The same with uh, fluorescent uh, lighting, um, it's got a more wider light because it burns at a much higher colour temperature. Um, now, with modern day technology, that's pretty good because in video cameras, you get auto white balance. So, in the olden days, when you needed colour meters and everything had to be literally calibrated, Nowadays, it's more straightforward, it's simple, you depend on your machinery, your camera will do the work for you, uh, regardless of the colour temperature, well if it's orange, or sometimes you get certain fluorescent uh, can give a green tinge, uh, don't worry, uh, your camera, your auto, uh, auto white balance in your camera will do all this for you, so don't panic. One thing I will say, is if you're using coloured gels to give mood lighting for crying out loud turn the auto white balance off otherwise your camera is going to really do its nut trying to get the right correct color white and colour balance so we've looked at the sort of lights you can get so now we're going to look at some lighting setups for the sort of things you might want to use we're first going to look at three-point lighting, then we're going to have a look at lighting a green screen, and then we're going to have a look at doing some interesting effects with lights, with things you wouldn't really think of, like car headlamps, a torch, giving some nice effects that will just add that little bit more to your film. Okay, so here I am in front of the green screen. And we're going to talk about lighting for the green screen. So I'm going to turn the green screen off. <coughs> there we are. One nice green screen there behind me. But lighting for it. Now, unfortunately, I'm not in the room that I usually use for green screen. I'm actually in my little office because my lovely daughter has uh, taken over my little, my bigger room. So uh, there is a bit cramped in here. But Danny here who uh, has got another video camera in his hand, is going to show you the what I'm using. First of all, I've got two soft boxes. The one over here, there, there if you want, Dave, if you can move around there, which is illuminating the background here and illuminating me. Then I've got the one just there, which is sort of bouncing off the wall illuminating this side of my face and illuminating this side of the green screen. Last light I've got, which is basically three-point lighting, is this little one here. It's a little halogen with little flaps, so I can adjust. Ah, it's hot. <laughs> so I can adjust the light. The nice thing about that is, why have I got it pointed behind me? Well, you know, you see often that when people do green screen, they've got this little green halo around them. Well, that backlight gets rid of that. It helps key the image into whatever background you're putting on there. So if I'm in a studio or a bigger room, I would use more. I would use the two soft boxes to give a nice light for your, my talent. They'd be standing further away from the green screen at the moment. This is what arm's length. Then I would use two or four, depending on the size of the green screen, I'm using the PAR lamps, which I showed you earlier, just giving it a nice even spread of light. 
but then again I would also still use that little down there my little backlight which again which will get rid of any, any green halo and give you a nice keyed image Hi yeah, my name's Danny. I'm going to take you on to the next part of the tutorial, which is uh, three-point lighting. Um, it's not that uh, difficult, pretty straightforward. Once you get the hang of it, it is absolutely simple. Now, three-point, three main lights. Uh, you've got your first light, which is your main light. Um, I actually prefer to use, uh, uh, we call it fluorescent lighting. Keeps nice and cool. It's pretty simple. And thinking on the environment, you see a pounds. Um, second lighting can be the actual, I'd say the good old uh, tungsten, the old fish fryer. Um, absolutely fantastic, um, especially uh, on the green screen, um, it gets rid of uh, shadows, absolutely fantastic. And then come down to your third light, that is uh, any harsh cast, um, or even better still, if you've got a white ceiling, point at the ceiling, you get rid of shadows. Okay, now for some ideas for special effects. It's a dull day and you want to do a shot where you're in a bedroom or living room and you want the sun shining on the bed. Get a couple of fluorescent lights, get some thick cloth, a duvet or something like that, stick it over the window so it blocks out all the light. Put the um, fluorescent by the window, you've then got a nice scene where it looks like you've got a nice hot summer's day. Another idea for effects, you can really only do this at night if you're doing this at home, if you're not in a studio. A nice light like ones we've got here behind you, walking forwards. So you, your whole talent is he's in shadow, but you see the shadow, the silhouette walking forwards. You can also do this effect at night with a car. Camera in front of the car, headlights on and have your talent walk from the front of the car towards the camera. It gives a really nice intense effect. Okay. You can also do an effect with a torch. You've, always, you've all done it as children. Hold the torch there and go on. Well, have your talent lying down, that's in the bed. Torch light on their eyes, they, open, they hear a noise, open their eyes. It gives that bit of a thriller effect to your movie. Well the actual torch itself, <coughs> um, that's a classic um, because as commonly known as paint with light. Um, that can have, like you've seen in the movies where all of a sudden um, two headlamps comes towards you. You cannot see anything because the background uh, and, and well in front of you really is actually totally silhouetted out. So basically, complete darkness, all you see is two beams of light. And in movies, it always stuns someone. It does give you a level of suspense. What's going to happen next? Is someone going to jump out, grab you from behind? It leaves the viewer, it lets her imagination run. It's a very, very, very good technique. And it's, it is pretty simple to do. Oops. What would make what would make really spooky, very eerie, is smoke. Now, John made a valid point. Um, even if if you're on a budget, you're not going to have the uh, the resources for generators, smoke machines. Cost far far too much. Mm. Now, I thought in an old army trick, is getting some grass, old hay. Don't set it alight. Actually. Let it smolder, and as you can imagine, you see the beams of the headlamps. The smoke will go across, and it's as it, when you, when you were a child, and um, you walked into a bedroom, and part of the curtain was open, and you seen the beam of light coming through. But if there's dust in the room, you can actually see the dust particles actually as if it was adhering to the actual uh, the beam of light so you could actually see the rays hitting the floor that is based on the same principle and it's it's cheap and can be pretty effective um, and because it's it's a night scene um, you couldn't tell the difference between mist or smoke 
uh, and the, the viewer, the audience, will be very much convinced. Mm. So, lighting outdoors, unfortunately it's peeing down with rain, so we're going to do it indoors, but using natural light, it's the same principle, because I'm using the light hitting my face, but half of me is dark, or darker, so we're going to use one of these, this is a reflector, and they're pretty cheap, and if you notice the difference between this, and that, You'll notice there's a lot more light going on my face and really filling in the detail. Try to keep it out of camera. If you can't afford one of these, <coughs> piece of card would do exactly the same. Notice, and as you see, the white card is giving me more light, it's reflecting more light onto my face. Without it, with it. You can also help soften light by pointing this at your talent, having your light source over here pointing at this, reflecting onto the talent. You get a more diffused light. It gets dark round here quickly. Actually, we're doing a simulated night. Basically, easiest way to do that is put your camera, if, it, if you can, onto manual white balance, get a dark blue filter, put it over the lens, and then adjust the shutter speed, which is usually called AV on your camera settings. That way it gives you a nice simulated nighttime shot without actually having to go out and freeze your things off at night. Again, I've got the reflector here, just giving a bit of light here, Gives you a nice idea, a nice feel of night. I'm a hunter. I'm hunting you. You can't run. You can't hide. I will get you. Well, that's it for the lighting tutorial. I know this is only a basic tutorial covering a, a few things, there are a lot of aspects of light that we didn't touch and we didn't cover, but uh, we will cover some more advanced lighting techniques later on. I want to say thank you to Mark Somerville for making me this really cool intro you've seen. I'll put the link to his site down below in my crutch or feet area. I want to thank Danny so much for coming to help me with this. I'll put a link to his website um, up so you can go and have a look at his site. I won't be doing a tutorial for a couple of weeks because my dad is really ill and I've got to help look after him. But I will be back with more tutorials soon. Thanks for watching.